Hello and welcome back to Harold Road. It's March 2024. Hope you're all well out there in model railway land and uh, I'm going to do a quick update. It's not going to be a massive video uh, this month because I've been concentrating more on Beeston Junction. As you, if you've been following the Facebook page uh, there's been a lot of detail work going in there. I'm going to show you what's been done there. Um, I'm going to explain how Beeston Junction actually works because it seems to be confusing a lot of people um, when I take pictures and put them on the Facebook page they seem to think that my trains are running in the wrong direction so I'll do a little piece of camera about how Beeston Junction actually works there is only a couple of new bits of stock to show you which I'll show you very shortly and then I'm just going to have a little bit of a talk about river counters as you know I have a passion for river counters I cannot stand river counters. Harold Road was made specifically simply with train set track and what you can get on the market to see how well you could make a, a model railway layout without too much elitism. Some people go out of their way to make their layouts and everything has to be absolutely perfect. I've never, never ever tried to make Harold Road 100% accurate. Um, I do like to get it fairly correct, but it's never going to be 100% accurate and it's never going to, um, what's the word, it's never going to please everybody. Now, I don't know whether that's jealousy, but we'll talk about river counters in a moment. But firstly, we'll just go through a few bits of stock that's arrived in the last month. That's only three, so... I haven't been very busy with rolling stock, but I have been busy with Beeston Junction. So without further ado, let's take a quick look at the new arrivals, then we'll take a look at Beeston Junction. So the first new addition to Harold Road is a clock. Um, <laughs> as you know, I come up here on a Saturday afternoon and a Sunday, and I, I lose track of time. So I can be up here for ages, so I bought myself a clock, just so I know what the time is. <laughs> So I said three new items of rolling stock have arrived. Actually, it's four. We've got Class 20s on the RHTT train. Now, the RHTT train caused a lot of controversy last month because I put one of the water tanks in the wrong place for the Yorkshire circuit. Jesus, I've got nothing else to worry about. So, um, yeah, that, that caused a lot of river counting. So we've got... Um, 2309 and 312 they are new additions and were weathered up um at the beginning of beginning of march maybe i think it was i'm not actually sure if they were actually on the last video if i've done this wrong then i'm sure someone's going to tell me we have a cavalax class 56 one of two i have that's been weathered up i'm not sure again whether this was on the last video if, if not it's a bonus for you we've got um 68 029 Courageous, that's just been re-weathered. It's, it's an old locomotive, but as TPE have lost their franchise, I just removed the branding. This has been heavily weathered. It's one of the favourites that are on um, the Facebook page. Lots of people seem to like this one when it, when it gets out and about and pictures are taken of it. Now this is the latest edition. This was bought uh, two weeks ago and weathered up last Saturday. This is a Backman 2901. I bought this off the internet for £60, quite cheap, it is a base model, it's not got no lights on it, you know, but I mean I've detailed it up, it looks it looks the business, I'm quite happy with it, not fussed that it hasn't got, actually got working lights on it, it doesn't really bother me. Uh, lots of people have, of uh, course, a couple of you have said, it's not dirty enough, well, it's, when it was with GBRF it was kept fairly clean. As you can see, there is dirt on the bottom, the sole bar is fairly dirty, all the grills have been filled in, and the roof is dirty. But if you look for reference pictures of 2901, it's never been full of filth. So the three reference pictures that I found for it showed it in fairly clean condition, so it's been weathered to that same clean condition. So another new model which has been weathered and onto the layout is a Curious Scale 37602. Uh, this was bought last year from Great Eastern Models and uh, I decided to get this one done um, at the beginning of the month. As you can see, it's been weathered to its usual dirty, grubby self when it was in use with DRS. 
Now I went uh, of a bit of a departure on this one. I actually used um, Precision Paints frame dirt and track dirt on this one and just had a little bit of matte black on the roof. As you know, I normally make my own uh, track dirt colors using matte leather and matte black, but this time I actually just decided to bite the bullet, spent a bit of money and use Precision Paints paints. Uh, I must admit, I highly recommend using uh, three items from Precision Paints and that is frame dirt, track dirt and roof dirt. So if you are thinking of weathering any of your locomotives and you've got the money to afford precision paints because they're, they're quite expensive but I think they're worth the money. Uh, you go for it, they're the three that you really need. So that's track dirt, roof dirt and um, frame dirt. So that that's the last locomotive I weathered before the 20. Yeah, that's so I've done the 20, 901 and I did this one before that. So let's take a look at the last purchase uh, of this month. So another Acura scale model, 37609. Now I missed out on this model when it came out from Acura scale, but having friends in high places and pulling a few favors, uh, I was able to procure 37609 from Acura scale. Um, stunning livery, this is why I kind of had to have it. Uh, this is still new and pristine and it's yet to be uh, weathered or have any work done to it. But as you can see, it will be the next locomotive that will be weathered. Uh, for use on Harold Road. So that's our new arrivals or locals I've been working on. Let's take a detailed look at Beeston Junction. So Beeston Junction is finally complete. Um, it's had a total rejig over the last couple of weeks. Um, I've had to move a few things because it got on people's nerves that things were in the wrong place. Again, river counting at its finest, but some of it was actually constructive criticism and I thank those who actually do do that but let's take a quick detailed look um, I know the point heaters and axle counters and the point detailing here is incorrect it should be in, in the cess but as I spent so long doing this little bit of detailing here I just thought you know what models license rule one it'll just stay as it is so please don't send me a comment saying the point heaters and the clamp stock motor and the axle counters in the wrong place they should be on the other side of the track yes they should be but I made a mistake and to be honest with you I can't be bothered to move it because it took so long to do it. You're just going to have to live with it. If, you, if it bothers you that much just move on to someone else and have a go at them. Right so all this detailing here is all new. The dummy point motors are by West Hill Wagon Works. That, they're all new. Um, ground signals are by Train Tech. The signal box was bought from Smith's Model Railways in Sheringham and it's been endorsed with uh, bits and pieces from scale model scenery, i.e. the steel steps and the signal box name plates. Just moving on past 2901, you can see again more detailing on the track side. All this piece here, this is all new and all around here, this area here is where you can see Network Rail are doing some preliminary investigation work before they do some track relaying on this section here. Now these bits of rail you can see on the outside, they are basically there because they're going to be replaced by the team. Again, detailing axle counters and the signals. I've put dummy jewellery wire for those. This all takes so long to do because each piece of um, jewellery wire has to be bent into shape, glued down and put into position. Again, this is all new here, more dummy point motors here. And then old sleep is all piled up all around here. We've got some survey work going on on this corner. And I've also rejigged the old mess hut here. This was all a little bit untidy, uh, so I've tidied that up a bit there. There used to be an old, uh, an old piece of track going along here. So I removed that. This is all new here, this fencing here. This wasn't here a couple of weeks ago. All this scenery, that was all just an old piece of track. If you remember rightly, if you're a fan, you'll remember this was just ballast. So I've had to like get rid of all that. We've made a footpath and a fence here. So we'll have some train spotters looking over there. All this, all this scenery here, this is all new. This section on this corner, as you can see, that's all new as well. Uh, the bushes are by War Painter and Tajima One. The trees are Will's Fine Leaf Foliage. I say foliage. So again, that's all new, that's all been tidied up. So that's where the work's been um, carried out over the last few weeks. 
as you can see, I only get a few hours on a Saturday to actually work on the layout and bring it all to you, to give you some something to look at. So you can imagine how long this is actually taking. So without further ado, I'm going to move on to another section of Beeston Road and I'll explain to you how the track directional operation works here at Beeston Junction. Let's take a look at Beeston Junction in more detail as it seems to confuse a lot of people because most of the time trains will run on the down main or the up main so trains will be going this way or going that way but Beeston Junction is totally different some of it is actually bi-directional so if I actually show you how it works it may stop some people sending me comments saying that your trains are running on the wrong tracks so we have the down main this is bi-directional until it hits this set of points here. There is a ground signal protecting that cross over there. So trains can actually run backwards and forwards on this section of track all the way to Harold Road. This is the up main. This is also bi-directional until it hits this junction here and it joins the down main. Any trains coming past here to get onto the depot will stop at this signal here that signal will change to green, ground signal will change to white and locomotives or trains can run into either the TMD area or run off this point into the stabling sidings. Again, this track here is bi-directional. It crosses over onto the down main and also it can go bi-directional towards the fueling stage and the a TMD building which is on Junction Road stabling sidings. So I hope that's kind of basically cleared that up because obviously if a picture of a locomotive is here and this ground signal is red it looks like it's spatted but actually it hasn't. Any locomotive can run to this point here, stop, reverse and go into Junction Road or into the stabling sidings here. Any other locomotive coming along here or a train can cross over this bi-directionally as well. As I said, all tracks are bi-directional until they've just gone past the two points which are there. And all points are protected by ground signals. As you can see, lots of details have gone in recently. Beeston Road derelict signal box, which is there. It's a Backman building and it's been enhanced by scale model scenery bits and pieces. Lock boxes are by Wills. Dummy point motors are by West Hill Wagon Works. Ground signals are by Train Tech. All this dummy wiring you see, and you've seen it on the Facebook page, is all done with 0.5mm 24 gauge jewellery wire. Now you can get that on the internet if you look hard enough. I did check it last night after people asked me questions about it, and it is available on Amazon as well as other aftermarket uh, marketplaces or suppliers indeed. All points on Beeston Junction are protected by ground signals. Ground signal there is for Martin's ballast siding. There is a feather just out of, out of reach around the corner. You can't see where I'm going. There is a, a signal and a feather which crosses over the tracks there. So basically everything is bi-directional up until the end there and then it reverts back to up and down I hope that's cleared that up because obviously I don't like getting comments from people saying something is wrong and when I know indeed it isn't so just be aware that Beeston Junction is mostly bi-directional they don't just go that way or that way as they're supposed to they can run in different directions up until a certain point so with no further ado let's carry on with the video Okay, the last piece today is I want to talk about ribbit counters. Those people who think they feel the need to make stupid comments or chastise someone's hard work for the sake of putting a comment. Now, Harold Road gets maybe three or four a week 
and I'm talking about rivet counters. They will troll through the page, they will look for things that they don't think are correct or maybe they're not correct. And they will go out of their way to actually make their comments on an open thread. Now, I would prefer a constructive criticism to come through via a personal message. That's the way I would do it. Not that I would do it. I mean, I've seen model railways of all different calibres and skill levels. And I'll just look at them and I'll just move on. I don't scrutinise someone else's hard work. And most of the rivet counting comments I get are from people who don't actually have a model railway of their own. So why the hell would you go on an open thread on Harold Road, which has had maybe 500 or 600 likes, and say to your, and, and actually write this or that is wrong, or I don't like that, or that piece of rolling stock isn't dirty enough. Rolling stock, may be it locomotives, wagons or coaches, if I'm weathering a locomotive, I will research that locomotive, I will source photographs of that locomotive, and I will weather that locomotive to a certain photograph. If you don't like what you see, scroll by. Why do you have to put a comment like that's too dirty or it's not dirty enough or this is wrong in my opinion or that's wrong in my opinion. Model railways are rule one. I could run Thomas the Tank Engine up and down on Harold Road if I wanted to. I could put plastic dinosaurs in certain places if I wanted to. I can do whatever I like, but I, I know for a fact that I'm posting a layout online so you get the you get that attention. Like, oh you posted that online so you, you know you, you gotta be ready for criticism. But why? Why would you criticize what you see? Why would you go on Harold Road study a picture and think to yourself I know I'm going to upset that man there by putting a comment about I think something's wrong if I've made a mistake which I haven't I don't make mistakes because it's rule one I can do what I like if I've made a mistake then all you've got to do if you work for network rail or you work on the railways or whichever and you feel you have to contact me why don't you just send me a personal message? Dear Harold Road, I just looked at this picture and I work for blah, 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 and that, that would not be there, or you need to move this or move that. I get comments about the colors of my figure's safety helmets. <sighs> Why? I've had people sending me, wanting to send me Networks, network rails, health safety policy on working by the side of the railway. Or another one I had the other week, your lock cabinet, it doesn't look like it's six foot six from the railhead, where the person working on it would be in a position of safety. It's a model railway, okay? I've never gone out of my way to make Harold Road 100% accurate. I do try and make it look as realistic as possible, which most of you actually understand and most of you love. The comments that I get which are positive are absolutely brilliant and that's why every weekend I come up into this loft and produce something for the masses. There is 8,300 people out there. There are top fans. 
So I always feel the need that I must produce something. I must. You know, most of you know I work a full week, I've got a family, I've got a wife downstairs who's waiting for me to finish this video so I can go and spend some time with her. But I'm up here, again, doing a piece of camera or yesterday afternoon, seven hours, putting tiny pieces of jewellery wire from certain ancillaries to make it look a little bit more realistic. I'm going out of my way to try and make Harold Road a family thing. I mean, I get people who actually follow my step-by-step -step guides on Facebook and they produce fantastic things and they, they will come to me saying, John, look at this. With your help, I produced this. Fantastic. If I inspire somebody, one person, or if I inspire two people, if I, you know, that, it works for me. Works for me. When I inherited Uncle Harold's money, when he sadly passed away, I could have gone out of my way and, and made, I could have spent it on a, a motorbike or had a midlife crisis or whichever. My idea was to build Harold Road with the aim of others to follow the journey. Hence why I do all the step-by-step -step guides. I don't just do it for myself, although I, you know, I, this, this is my model railway layout and I want to I want to bring it to the masses. But I do it for everybody else. Hence why I want to make Harold Road an authentic layout using train set track. I mean, there are people out there who will use Streamline, they will make their own track and fair play to them. You know, if they want to do that, that's fine. But I want Harold Road to be for all those who want to have a go at it and also those who don't have a model railway who just enjoy what I do. I'm going to say now, that although the river counting comments will still come in, I'm going to say no, you're not going to get a reply from me. So you might as well not bother because I'm not going to reply to any river counting comments or anything stupid which is put on the Facebook page. I, I try to reply to every single comment that comes in. And I've said this before, I'm not a faceless modeler. Although I'm well established and Harold Road has gone worldwide, I will still engage with every single comment if I can. Okay, if I've missed you, whew, then I'm sorry. I do hold a full-time job, as you know. But my phone constantly goes off all the time with comments. Most of them are positive. But we've got to eradicate these river counters. Otherwise, the hobby will just die. And the, the, and you'll only see model railway layouts at exhibitions. And let's just let's face it, model railway exhibitions are dying. So it's layouts like Harold Road that will produce the next modellers. Because, because Harold Road and myself will bring you how things are done, give it a go, have a go at airbrush work, have a go at detailing your, your stock, have a go at, at track laying track, have a go at doing your ballasting. I'm bringing this to everybody, so I'm not going to have an engagement with someone who's going to put on one of my threads silly comments like this is wrong that's wrong i don't care i really don't care would you say your comment to me in the middle of the street considering the size i am you probably wouldn't would you and i'm not saying that because <laughs> i'm not saying that because i'm a violent person i'm not i'm not a violent person at all but i'm just saying you wouldn't come up to me in the middle of the street and say oh hello there john just want to say that I, uh, your layout some of your uh, some of your things were out of position and uh, your health and safety policy for your figures is wrong you know network rail wouldn't 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 have it i have to sometimes i have to sometimes my phone will go off and i have to quickly remove a comment that someone's put on there that they don't like and sometimes i'm out with my family having and enjoying it a, a day out my phone will ping and it's someone making a stupid comment i know i'm going to get them i know i'm going to get them but i want to encourage people to have a go at modeling 
and when someone does a nice piece I want them to feel like they can they can post it on the internet and we can all enjoy it because at the moment this world is a nasty place the internet can be a nasty place but we want the Harold Road family which you all are the Harold Road family to be like this Let's all be one. Let's enjoy model railways. Let's enjoy what I do. I want you to enjoy what I do. But I'm not going to engage with rivet counters. Simple as. Continue to put your comments down if you want to. As soon as I see them, you'll be blocked and banned. Or I could name and shame you and let the 8,200 you do enjoy Harold Road, let them have a crack at you with your name on it. It's entirely up to you. I don't see the need to bully people or be nasty or antagonise someone who's building a model railway. There are loads like me who are trying to bring you model railways. If the river counting continues, then model railways will go underground. You won't see Harold Road or Banks Road or whichever, or you know, there's, there's loads of them out there. I, I, that are fantastic layouts. With that in mind, I know I've been on my high horse a little bit, but the rivet counting has been getting a bit silly recently. So I'm going to cut off now and say to the 8,200 of you who do follow Harold Rood on Facebook, I appreciate every single comment. I really do. Not the ones that are bad, obviously. But I appreciate the following because it's you guys who just inspire me to come up here on a Saturday and a Sunday and get on with it because I have to produce something for you. Um, without you guys, I don't know, Harold Road wouldn't be where it is now. Let's keep it real. Let's make Harold Road the one stop modern image model railway. I'm being silly. Thanks again to all those who are top fans. Thanks to everybody who engages. I love you all. Until next time, April update. Um, I'll say goodbye for now. Until then, ta -da.